Bengt Fadir from um, Stockholm, Sweden, from the Karolinska Institute, and I see also from Pittsburgh. So you are coming from two places at the same time. Um, he's our last speaker on graphene oxide interactions. Please. Thank you very much. Uh, and I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me. I'm very happy to be uh, in, in this session. I think the talk that I'm uh, that I plan to give today could also probably have been a good fit for the graphene session earlier today. But nevertheless, I'm going to focus on graphene oxide and interactions with primary human innate immune cells, uh, uh, specifically neutrophils and macrophages. And the work that I'm presenting is, has been performed in the, in the frame of the flagship project, Graphene, which is a large European project, a 10-year effort. Um, and within the flagship project, there is a work package consisting of some one dozen groups or so dealing with health and, and environmental safety of, of graphene-based materials. Now, at the very beginning of the flagship project, we published this uh, paper in, in Angevante Chemie where we tried to develop a classification scheme for graphene-based materials in order also to guide our toxicological studies uh, and to, to allow us to do those studies in a more systematic manner. And, and uh, briefly, what we are looking at are three parameters, um, the number of layers uh, uh, and as well as the average lateral dimensions of the, of the materials from nano to micron size. And, and the third parameter is the carbon to oxide, uh, oxygen ratio. Uh, what I'm going to discuss today are uh, essentially graphene oxides of small or large lateral dimensions. So we're going to compare these two. I want to give just a brief background based on the, pub the published uh, data. These are not our studies, these are uh, studies available in the literature. Uh, namely, uh, the following two studies which uh, are presented here, suggesting that graphene oxide triggers uh, cell death in macrophages and the suggestion uh, from this study, uh, uh, sorry, let me go back, uh, from the study, uh, the references at the top of the slide, uh, is that uh, graphene oxide triggers a TNF alpha secretion, which leads to an autocrine necroptotic, that means uh, regulated necrotic cell death. There is a second study also shown in this slide, uh, also published in ACES Nano, where the lateral dimensions of graphene oxide were suggested to be important for this TNF alpha uh, production and other pro inflammatory effects. And uh, again, uh, in both studies, there is a suggestion that TLR4 is involved and, and also here because this is a TLR4 inhibitor which in this study prevented or, or suppressed the TNF alpha secretion. Now, uh, what I'm going to show you today uh, our, uh, is our data which suggests that uh, uh, none of this is true. And, and I want to provide maybe a partial explanation also for this. Of course, uh, uh, taking into account that different cell models maybe have been used different uh, uh, varieties of graphene oxide may have been used. But one uh, key element is, of course, endotoxin contamination. And um, we heard a, a, a very uh, nice presentation on this topic uh, earlier in this session. What we have done in the flagship project is to evaluate uh, uh, graphene oxide samples for endotoxin. Uh, just to make a long story short, we found that the conventional LAL tests, chromogenic LAL assays and so forth, are not applicable to graphene oxide. That is, we do see quite some significant interference with the LAL assay. Uh, we then uh, developed, a, 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 let's say, a variation on the macrophage activation test, um, which we call the TNF alpha expression test. Uh, basically, using primary human um, macrophages, we incubate these with the graphene-based materials with or without polymyxin B, which is an LPS inhibitor. And now if we see TNF alpha secretion, and if this is suppressed by, by polymyxin B, we can then conclude that this is a result of endotoxin contamination. If it's not suppressed by polymyxin B, it's likely to be an intrinsic effect of the material. Um, and together with the lab of Costas Costarielos, uh, also partners in the flagship, um, we also developed guidelines for, for let's say, sterile synthesis of graphene oxide. But, but uh, essentially, uh, we all know that endotoxin is present everywhere, so it's important to use uh, endotoxin-free water, to use uh, sterilized glassware, and so on. Now, uh, using this endotoxin-free graphene oxide, we interacted the materials with primary human monocyte-derived macrophages. And uh, contrary to some studies in the literature, we don't see 
uh, a masking effect. We don't see graphene oxide aligning with the plasma membrane. What we do see is both for the small uh, graphene oxide to the left and the large graphene oxide flakes, uh, we see very nice uh, cellular internalization. And you may appreciate that there are packages of graphene oxide, um, like accordions, compressed into, into vesicles within the cell. And also this is true for the large uh, graphene oxide flakes. So we see internalization. We don't see any signs of toxicity. Uh, and this is up to 100 microgram per ml. Um, and neither by ultrastructural features, by electron microscopy, or by Alamer blue assay, for instance. So uh, large and small graphene oxide flakes in this cell model uh, are both non-toxic. We then did the uh, multiplex array to profile the cytokine and chemokine secretion. We, we used a, a commercially available panel of some 26 or 27 cytokines and chemokines. I focus here on one uh, important example, namely TNF-alpha. And, and basically, as you can see, uh, we don't see TNF-alpha production using endotoxin-free graphene oxide, either small flakes or large flakes. Our positive control is LPS. Um, i give you one more example. We did the same experiment, the cytokine profiling, in primary human macrophages um, with or without LPS priming. So that means we uh, pre-stimulate the, the cells with LPS to have a more uh, activated phenotype. What, and we then found that certain cytokines are, in, in fact, induced. And, and here we're looking at IL-1 beta. Um, again, LPS is our positive control. What we now see is that in, in the presence of LPS priming, we see quite a pronounced IL-1 beta secretion, both for the large flakes and the small flakes, but note that there is no size difference. Both large and small flakes trigger IL-1 beta to a comparable degree. IL-1 beta is uh, normally, um, uh, uh, secretion is normally an, a, a result of inflammasome activation. So uh, switching now from primary cells, we used THP1 cells that were genetically uh, deficient for various components of the NELP3 inflammasome, and the results are shown here. So uh, the, the, the bottom line is that uh, in, in uh, uh, standard, let's say standard THP1 cells, both LPS and small and large graphene oxide flakes triggered IL-1 beta. Uh, but this is completely uh, abrogated in, in cell lines that don't express um, ASC, which is uh, uh, one of the components of the inflammasome, or NALP3 itself, or caspase one which is, of course, the enzyme which cleaves pro-IL-1 beta to produce mature IL-1 beta. Again, in this cell model, we also see no difference between the small and large graphene oxide flakes. So the, to summarize this first part uh, of my presentation, um, we do uh, not see any uh, cytotoxicity for graphene oxide in primary human monocyte-derived macrophages, uh, neither for small or large graphene oxides. These are nanoscale, these are micron scale in lateral size. Um, again, using LPS-free graphene oxide, we don't see TNF-alpha production, which is contrary to the published uh, uh, literature. But we do see in LPS-primed macrophages that there is IL-1 beta secretion through the canonical NAMP3 inflammasome pathway. However, these effects are size independent, again, uh, in contrast to several other studies in the literature. But it, an important uh, note here, and a non-trivial uh, 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 issue, is that we have to work with endotoxin-free materials or we need to control for endotoxin if we are going to use immune-competent cells such as macrophages. And this is um, perhaps even more true for neutrophils, and I will um, discuss this in the remaining um, few minutes of my presentation. Um, neutrophils, as you all know, are, are uh, specialized and professional uh, cells uh, uh, of the Im innate immune system specialized in killing bacteria and fungi. And they can do so essentially through two different pathways, either intracellularly or extracellularly. So neutrophils um, can internalize microbes, which are then uh, proteolytically or, or oxidatively uh, um, destroyed within the phagosomes uh, inside the neutrophil. Alternatively, neutrophils can produce so-called neutrophil extracellular traps uh, or nets. Now, nets uh, are essentially a network of nuclear chromatin, which is expelled from the neutrophil. 
And, and this nuclear chromatin network is studied with granular proteins, including neutrophil elastase, myeloperoxidase, etc. Also, histones are present. And, and in these extracellular traps, the, the microbes are trapped and destroyed. And um, we have shown here that, that we can detect neutrophil extracellular traps by staining for extracellular neutrophil elastase. Um, and uh, shown in blue are the uh, cell nuclei. So we asked the question whether graphene oxide is sensed, uh, in, in a manner of speaking, by neutrophils as, as uh, microbes. In fact, what we, we have found is that graphene oxide um, triggers neutrophil extracellular traps in a size-dependent manner. We use two different assays to measure nets, to quantify nets, the neutrophil extracellular traps, either by measuring extracellular DNA or extracellular elastase activity. And, and uh, uh, in white are the small flakes, in black are the large flakes. At, at, so there's a dose-dependent and size-dependent induction of nets. These, by the way, are the size distribution data for the small flakes, which are some 80 to 100 nanometers in diameter, and the large flakes, some 8 to 10 microns in diameter. Um, we also uh, have uh, begun some uh, investigations to look at the mechanism of net induction. And uh, we asked the question, is the NADPH oxidase important? It's well known for, for uh, for PMA, for instance, which is commonly used to trigger nets, uh, that this acts by activation of the NADPH oxidase. If we add DPI, um, which is an NADPH oxidase inhibitor, we can um, reduce the, net, the, the amount of nets. Um, now, what we find is that for the large graphene oxide flakes, the NADPH oxidase inhibitor has no effect, whereas for the small graphene oxide flakes, there is an inhibition. So there is a difference between large and small flakes. Just for comparison, uh, uh, it may be hard to, to discern here, but these are uh, electron microscopy images of neutrophils which have internalized small graphene oxide flakes uh, encircled here, whereas if in the case of neutrophils, we actually don't see much internalization. Instead, we see that graphene oxide um, aligns with the plasma membrane, and even uh, uh, with some imagination, you might say that the, the, there is a stripping of the membrane, uh, uh, and the graphene oxide seems to strip off uh, the plasma membrane from the cell. So the, the behavior here is quite different and we may account for these differences, but we are, we are uh, continuing to investigate this mechanism. Um, this is a scanning electron microscopy image just to show you what the nets actually look like. This is a neutrophil which uh, has produced uh, so-called neutrophil extracellular traps. You may see uh, the chromatin network here. And this is a graphene oxide um, a flake, a large flake, which has triggered the net induction and, and after which the graphene oxide itself is trapped in the nets. Now, as I told you before, nets uh, contain granule proteins, including myeloperoxidase. So we, we uh, asked the question, can the nets actually degrade graphene oxide extracellularly? And to do this, we triggered neutrophils with PMA, which uh, allows us to trigger net formation. We then purified the nets from the cells. So we have purified nets. We incubate this with graphene oxide. And in fact, using Raman uh, spectroscopy, um, we can look at this characteristic Raman spectra and we do see a time-dependent oxidation, uh, which is an indication of, of uh, degradation of these materials um, in purified nets. So this is acellular degradation of graphene oxide with time. And we know that it's myeloperoxidase dependent because in the presence of the MPO inhibitor, um, there's no oxidative damage. Finally, we also asked whether activated neutrophils, which are activated with the agonists shown here, um, can also degrade graphene oxide. So activated neutrophils will release myeloperoxidase, and, and we then asked the question, will this uh, degrade graphene oxide? Again, using Raman spectroscopy, we see uh, both for small flakes and for large graphene oxide flakes uh, at the bottom here, a time-dependent degradation. Um, and perhaps not surprisingly, it's more efficient or more rapid, I should say, for the small graphene oxide flakes. Uh, so this is the first demonstration of neutrophil-mediated degradation of graphene oxide. To summarize then, um, in contrast to macrophages, where we did not see size-dependent effects and actually no toxicity either, uh, when, for neutrophils, we do see that graphene oxide triggers nets in primary uh, human neutrophils. This is size dependent. Um, and we also see that these nets, which contain myeloperoxidase, can actually digest or, or biodegrade graphene oxide. 
Moreover, as I showed you in the, in the last slide, uh, or the previous slide, that the activated neutrophils can also digest graphene oxide, uh, and this is also an extracellular event due to the release of myelin peroxidase. So overall, I mean, our innate immune system has evolved to protect us from foreign intrusion, microbes, yeah. fungi, etc. Um, based on these studies, uh, uh, and I apologize for going so quickly through this, this data, but based on these studies, uh, we may uh, speculate that the immune system can also sense two-dimensional objects, which I think is rather fascinating, and actually use similar, very similar mechanisms, in this case net production uh, and digestion, to destroy, uh, uh, as it were, these materials. Um, Finally, let me acknowledge the people who did the work, uh, uh, the people in my lab, in particular Surat Mukherjee, uh, shown here, who really has been uh, responsible for all the uh, graphene oxide-based work in our lab, uh, other collaborators in Stockholm. Uh, I also want to highlight Kostas Kostarielos uh, and his postdoc, Neus Lozano, who provided us with the endotoxin-free graphene oxide, and our collaborators uh, uh, here in Switzerland at, in St. Gallen, who were involved in the endotoxin studies. And the work was funded by the EU Graphene Flagship Project. Thank you very much. Probably we are at the end, yes. uh, a little bit over time. So, uh, if there is no question, then thank you very much, Bengt. Okay, thank you. And uh, I give the words to Marina to close the session. Um, thank you very much uh, for everybody who stayed here until the end of the session. Um, I think we had very interesting and stimulating discussion. I suggest uh, to uh, continue this discussion, but uh, we now have to uh, stop for break before the next sessions. Thank you.